Hello, my spookies, and this is a very special bonus episode that I am doing, and not only am I doing it unexpectedly, but it is completely unexpected. I got settled in my cabin up in northern Michigan and then decided, you know what I want to do? I want to talk about creepy Michigan folklore. Well, luckily... I I have a friend everywhere, it seems. So I've got my good friend, Stu Miller over here, hanging out with me to tell me a little bit more. (laughs) How's it going? I'm good, Stu. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You are way away from me in Michigan, but uh, welcome to the Mitten Stain again. I'm sure you've been here many times. (laughs) I am way away from everything. And and I know where you are. I know where, where you are, at least. Roughly, but yeah, you're a good, I would say seven hours from me. Seven so, hours? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's cl- yeah. I, that means that I live closer to Carp Lake than you do. Yes, you do. Uh huh. Wow. Okay. Cause I'm yeah, from Southern weird. Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's not true then. Um, yeah. Well, I guess not. Maybe it's six hours. No, I'm, I used to go to Marquette and it took me eight hours. So I don't know, um, how that worked out, but it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, well, I get it though. Cause I'm from Ohio and Ohio is a big square so state. Be, yeah, yeah. So people will be like, Oh, you're going to Cleveland. Is that like next door? And I'm like, no, that's three and a half hours away. You know, like that's on the opposite side of the state. So it's actually closer for me to go to where you live. Than I believe that it's just between us now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, <laughs> so anyway, I'm on a uh, work retreat up in Northern Michigan. I'm actually in Carp Lake, Michigan. Um, staying right on a cabin on the water, because let me tell you, Northern Michigan is my new favorite place to vacation in the winter because the entire state is on sale. I, (laughs) I cannot resist a bargain. And (laughs) so what I do is in like around September, I start hunting for deals in January in Northern Michigan. It's a good place for that everywhere is cheap and i yep. love snow yeah i do too actually and, yes i wouldn't and, live here if i didn't well i would hope yeah i'd hope you'd get yeah. the heck out but i love snow so uh the lake effect is so incredibly intense here yeah, that yeah. they're like oh it's snow it, it's gonna snow on monday and you're like oh yeah it snowed and then tuesday it snows and then wednesday it also snows and they don't even mention it on the forecast because it's oh, like yeah. who can keep up with all of it You know, (laughs) it's not only that, but it's who cares. You know, if you live here, you know that from the end of November till about the middle of April, it's probably going to snow one day or two days a week. Yeah. And it's everybody just like, "Eh." (laughs) "Eh." yeah. And last year I was actually in Grayling, Michigan. I don't know if you're familiar with Grayling. Grayling is a beautiful town. Mm -hmm. I think next year I'm going to return to Grayling, although I'm really liking Carp Lake, though, and I'm staying in like a classic wood cabin. Nice. It's very well, except for the sound booth I built, which literally I'm an adult in a blanket fort. It is. Oh, that's so much fun. (laughs) That is really fun. (laughs) Great time to be in here because it's so cold. (laughs) Yeah. That it doesn't matter that it gets to become a sauna in here. Yeah. And and it's even funnier if you think of the of the differences in the amount of snow between you and I, you probably have what, two, three inches on the ground, maybe more. Uh, You mean right now? Yeah. Oh, there's no snow on the ground in Dayton. Oh, okay. So it is the same as it is down here. Okay. So interesting. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's an interesting experience. So anyway, uh, so I decided I had this wild idea that I should do an episode of weekly spooky called spooky on the road. And we talk all about Michigan. Because Michigan has a very rich amount of folklore. Yes. So, and and I know that uh, one of the big things, and you'll especially notice it the further north you go in Michigan, is there has to be a lot of, I would assume, Native American folklore. Because nearly every town, road, bridge, and lake, river has a Native name. Yeah, that's pretty much throughout Michigan in general. But yeah, you're going to find more of that north, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) is there, is there... What kind of, okay, so first of all, where did you grow up in Michigan? Uh, Kalamazoo, right where I live. Oh, okay. Um, I, yep, I have not really strayed too far uh, from here. I did go to college in Marquette, which you're not too far from now. Uh, that's in the northern-ish point of the UP. Um, so, yeah, we got a lot of the, you step outside and it's just gorgeous woods and the winters were long and hard and, you know, <laughs> you don't have a little bit of, Michigan in your blood. It's a, it's a big change from even down here. 
Oh, um, uh, everyone yeah, I've, I've yeah. Yeah. Everyone I've talked to in Michigan says the UP, the Upper Peninsula for those who yeah. are uninitiated is uh-huh. a different planet. It's just it a is. completely different Absolutely. place. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um yeah, it stays colder longer, it gets colder earlier, that kind of thing. As you can imagine, you know, the further you get north, it's just that way. Um but yeah, I'm from here, Kalamazoo, which is like I said, south of you quite a bit. Um and born here, lived here, got married here, have kids here. You know, I haven't really strayed too far from here. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure I, I had a full understanding. And also, yeah. I'm, I'm impressed there's a college in the UP because the UP yes. seems to be very sparse in a lot there's of ways. There's actually two or three up there. Um, wow. Northern Michigan is the biggest. Then there's uh, one in Houghton, uh, which is f- uh, west of Marquette, uh, Michigan Tech, I believe it's called. Um, so there's actually a couple up there, but obviously the biggest ones are down here. Yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. in the mitten, <laughs> not the, the trolls. We're the trolls, by the way. That's what they call you when you're below the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Bridge. That is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually on Tuesday or no, on Wednesday, uh, I'm actually going to go and check out the UP because awesome. I'm not even 15 minutes from it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Right. Right. And the bridge is a trip. If you've never been over the bridge. Never. Um, have you been over a bridge like that's that long? Uh, I don't know if I've been over a bridge that's exactly that long, but I've been over a bridge that's over a mile or two long. Okay. So it is. It, it is wild. It is. And if it's the least bit windy, you're going to know it. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> oh, it, but why would it be windy over the middle of the Great Lake? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's about? great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like it's an ocean. There's no sharks. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a trip. I've, I've been over it. Oh, God, probably close to 100 times. And... It never ceases to amaze me anytime I'm so yeah. <laughs> Whenever awesome. I take a bridge to an island, um yeah. it is freaky if it's because if the bridge is more than a mile long, there there comes this point where you're like, Oh, everything is bridge now. Behind yes, me is right. all bridge, exactly. in front of me is all bridge. There's no land anymore. And then you start praying to your given deity about survival. It's it's all Yeah. Weird. It basically is like that scene in the beyond in Louisiana where it's just nothing but bridge go. and a blind woman with her dog standing. There you in the go. Middle. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. People so, walk across that thing too. Oh, anyway. Gosh. Yeah. So, so to get the, to folklore, because we could goof off yes. forever. Stu and I are, are very pally. So we, we will, pally. we will start to goof off if we're not careful. Yeah. Um, so when you were a kid, was there like a go-to ghost story or a go-to monster cryptid kind of thing you heard a lot about? Yeah. Um, I think being in Scouts was the big... Oh, yeah. The big trigger for, uh, you know, if you wanted to know about creepy outdoor cryptids things, which I didn't, you know, we didn't look at it as... I didn't know what cryptids were back then. I mean, that that was... We're talking mid-80s. Um, but we knew what we were scared of and our, you know, our, our troop leaders and scout, you know, the scout masters and the older kids would always, you know, sit us down at the fire and talk about like the Manitou and, the um, you know, Indian, it's always Native American stuff that was the scariest, uh, scariest things. And, you know, they would, you know, drop in creepy, just random things. Like there was always like the, the local insane asylum that accidentally somebody broke out. And uh, went on a murderous rampage. You know, that wasn't necessarily cryptid related, yeah. but it was always, it always scared the piss out of us anyway, because we're in a woods and we all know that something or someone is out there. But yeah, that's, I think Scouts was the big, the years of my life where I learned the most about that stuff. So what is the Manitou? Yeah. I'm not super familiar. So you're, you're, this is straight up educational for me. Sure. Sure. Yeah. The Manitou is like a um, Indian uh, spirit. I hate to say Indian. I don't want to keep doing Native American spirit. It's all right. You um, heard it back when that when they still said yes, that all the time. Exactly. So. That was not a thing back then. It was it was in the yeah. And it's a like a vengeful spirit um that I believe is from a a uh a deceased Indian that would come out uh and and seek uh vengeance on whatever killed it. You know, so it could be like a um a white man, you know. Mm-hmm. And it would seek out the area or whatever the location and just uh, nightmares, just kill kill everything in, in its path. But it was always a spirit kind of thing. It was never like a um, a regular human, you know. It, it, it looked like a, boy, what was the Manitou? Um, 
I almost want to equate it to like a, it would have like a deer head and okay. like a um, a creepy like big footish kind of body. Yeah, I think I've seen art renderings of a oh like yeah a they're all over the place. creature. Yep. So, because one of my one of my favorite speaking of deer, one of my absolute favorite um, Native American kind of creepy folklore is the deer woman. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you guys get the deer woman out in Michigan or if that's a little a, bit. I think that's a little a, bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For, for those who don't know, the deer woman is this beautiful woman, almost a siren like woman mm-hmm. who comes to that's men right. and gets them all uh, hot and bothered. And <laughs> they don't realize because they're so enthralled with her beauty that her hind legs are a deer leg or deer legs. She has uh-huh. a deer's legs and she tramples you to death. For being, uh, it depends on what part of the country the story is, because it can be a punishment for something, or it can be as simple as like a morality tale about like, you know, be careful where you go. In some areas, the dear lady is very vengeful. In some areas, <laughs> the dear lady is very kind and only helps people who need revenge or who have hurt people. It really depends on what region what the dear yeah. lady really represents. I know that further west, the dear lady tends to be more of a oh, you were being a bad kid well the deer lady might stomp you you know like be careful out there you never know who the deer lady is and in other areas it would be like you know oh well the white man does something bad the deer lady stomps him see when i grew up uh thanks to mexican folklore i had la llorona so i was afraid to get out of bed yes (laughs) yeah i can honestly say that that is one that's probably my top uh five things i would not want to run into even at a distance that is absolutely terrifying. Oh, because it, it is a human, more or less. Yes, and just the sound that comes out of out hard is is chilling. I mean, yeah, that's that's absolutely on my list. <laughs> well, and our my favorite crypt, cryptid right now is your adorable doggy running around. It's oh, no big deal. Like, yeah, we, we all, yeah. Oh yeah, I can Sorry. see I can see him just a little bit. He's <laughs> yeah. he's pumped. He's having a great day. He has a little bit of the zips every morning. <laughs> That's what's happening right now. Yeah. Oh, that's sorry. No, it's super cute. Oh no, no, it's all good. The, the, it, people are under no illusion that we're not just chatting with each other. No, that okay. No, I'm, there you go. Then. <laughs> are you done? Really? Okay. Aww. Yeah, done. But uh, uh, oh yeah, I could talk about La Llorona forever because oh, yeah. that was my boogeyman growing up. So yeah. you know, it'd be like you know, uh, I was called Ricky when I was a little boy. I'd be like, and little Ricky, if you get up in the middle of the night and walk around the house. You'll hear her wailing. You'll oh, my God. And your parents told you this? Uh, my stepfather did. <laughs> oh, my God. What is wrong with that? My, my stepfather was, was born in Mexico. Oh, so right. and and his parents That's did an that for excuse, him. I guess. Oh, oh yeah, no, no. I always joke. It's like you know, if it was a Caucasian family, it's child abuse. If it's a Mexican right. family, <laughs> then it's just charm. It's okay, yeah, yeah, it's charm. It's all right, I love it. So I yeah, <laughs> but I used head. to I used to lay in bed when I was like six years old, debating just peeing the bed to not risk going to the yeah, bathroom. Right, right. You'd have to, right? And and the I version mean, you take one one step off that bed, and something's <laughs> grabbing you. And the, the version I was told was that La Llorona had a little, two little boys, so that it oh, was really? that she needed a little boy. She needed little boys, oh, so that it made geez. it scarier for me. <laughs> I have not heard that version. That's like adding insult to injury. <laughs> no, that's exactly you know, he, this is already bad enough. <laughs> Let's throw kids in there too. <laughs> hey, Good man, Lord. you know. Uh, but you know, I, I straightened up and flew right. I was I was I always guess. in my boy. bedroom at night. That's for sure. But you always had wet sheets. Man, because you couldn't get out of bed. <laughs> Why'd you pee the sheets, Ricky? Well, why do you think? Oh, the worst is he would say that her wailing would sound like a song to her victims, so you would yeah, follow it I because it that. had a beautiful melody. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see that. So and that was, was like, kind of oh, siren like, too. That yeah, yeah, no, it, it yeah. is. It, it's just um, I always pictured her wailing as just like absolute ear splitting caterwauling. There's no <laughs> melody or anything to it. You're just like, yeah, ear shattering. Well, the, the, the version I was told as a kid was that you hear her wailing like the wind, like it's, it's as light as hearing the wind outside, but you have to go to it. You have to get to it. Um, a version that, uh, I read about, I think it was in Colombia was, uh, that the, that La Llorona's wailing would actually get quieter the closer you got to her, which I thought was really creepy. Yeah. That's interesting. Oh yeah, but La Llorona has never really been 
traditionally a threat to adults. It's always been a threat to children because it's yeah. a way of keeping, you know, a nice, a nice, uh, uh, folksy Catholic way to keep you in bed, right. <laughs> stay right. in bed anyway, because we I got mean, a lot more I, kids to make. We got, we're yeah, Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I kind of grew up with, with similar things, but mine was always like, not so much folklore related. It was just like, you know, something's in the closet. You know, that was always my, my go-to and nobody ever told me there was, it was just, I assumed there was. Sure. You know, so I'd get up and I'd be like, hey, you know, you can check my closet. <laughs> Something's in here. Um, and there wasn't as far as I know, <laughs> but uh, they could have just been lying to me. Um, yeah, but I never got the I never got the, the benefit of the of the uh, why you're on a folk, folk tale. But well, that would have been so. Huh? I, I, <laughs> I, I'm a straight I'm, white growing up. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to just say uh, and leave it at that. So yeah, good idea. <laughs> so we have the Manitou, which is a. Yes. A deer, creepy deer, Bigfoot like manifestation yeah, of I think a spirit. So. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, one of my favorites, so I'm going to bring it up. Yeah. Because the last time I was in northern Michigan, I kept joking about it is mm-hmm. the Wendigo. Yes. The Wendigo yeah. is something that has always captured my imagination. Yes. Fantastic. So for those who don't know anything about the Wendigo, the Wendigo is a kind of creature, again, deer-like, which makes sense because deer are yes, a predominant are. species, especially hundreds of years ago in the Americas. Right. Deer are just everywhere. Everywhere has deer. So it makes sense that deer are a major part of, of folklore. Uh, it's a deer-like creature that is summoned by cannibalism. Yes. And the Wendigo is kind of a cautionary tale about cannibalism because of how brutal the winters would be in this part of the world. Uh So when you were a kid or when you were an adult, even, I mean, did you ever hear any Wendigo stories? Did you ever hear anything about like where the Wendigo is or or anything like that? Uh, Again, this goes back to uh, scouts was always the way to to go. Yeah. Yeah. Taught me, taught me how to fear everything. (laughs) Um, until you grow up and then you realize, oh, that wasn't so bad. But yeah, we would, we would hike and camp everywhere in Michigan. And that was always one of those, I think it went along with, um, the Manitou kind of tail. Cause the Wendigo, I believe has a full deer body. And then the upper part of it, I believe is sort of like a maciated skeleton. Yeah. And then the deer head isn't so much a deer head. At least this is the way I was told. It's Ehlers on a skull. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and this thing, I guess, was like you said, brought on by by cannibalism. Which, boy, oh, now that you say that, it brings back some uh, memories. Um, and <laughs> there's yeah, a yes. sentence you don't hear a lot. Once you said cannibalism, <laughs> yeah. oh, brought back so yeah, many oh, memories. Boy. Just fantastic <laughs> memories. You know, and when you're in the scouts, you eat what you eat. We uh, <laughs> we'd sit in our tents and just, you know, you couldn't sleep. There's no way you could sleep after, you know. And you knew that the people that were telling these stories were crazy. And and your it was your own friends that were like, Well, good luck sleeping now that you know about this thing. <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 be a cannibal in your in your tent. Uh I think we knew we couldn't bring them to us, but uh yeah, we, we learned about them and, and very visual storytelling gave you that picture in your head of of we could almost see it. And then you'd look around at the at the campfire and you'd see the, the lights of reflected eyes all around you. And, you know, <laughs> you know, part of your brain is like, okay, it's just raccoons and, 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 you know, maybe even deer, but it's probably not this thing. And, and, but your brain is like, oh yeah, it's totally this thing. You're, you're in trouble. But yeah, again, scouts is the way to go. If you want to learn about this stuff, man, no, the moment you said you were in scouts, I was like, oh man, scouts uh-huh. in Michigan, you've got to be hearing all yep. kinds of interesting native american stuff because i mean the scouts teaches a lot of that anyway yes, let alone in, in a place that. like michigan yeah because like michigan yep. or uh upstate new york for people who aren't super familiar with this part of the country michigan michigan and upstate new york well new york in general but especially upstate uh-huh. uh, in particular are very native american uh focused in their like town names uh-huh. uh, lake names river names areas stuff like that yeah, yeah. because they have such a an, a very rich history of native american yeah. and if uh, you look tradition. at if you look at the um the counties in michigan i would say over 80 percent of them just by looking at them you know that they're indian names native yeah. american names and 
uh, going back to the um, Wendigo, you know, I think near you, where you're at now, there is a lake that's actually called Wendigo Lake. Uh, I was looking it up yesterday. Uh, it's spelled differently. Yeah. And in fact, you can spell Wendigo like 16 different ways from what I've seen. But I thought that was pretty interesting that they've, that the lore has gotten so deep uh, into that area that they're naming like, oh, there's Wendigo Lake. You know, <laughs> there, just in case you're in America, I believe there are three Wendigo Lakes. They're spelled W I N D I G O. Yes. Which is a little correct. less than the traditional. Yeah, a little bit one. different. Yeah. But there's also Wendigo, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Which yep. is in the Upper Peninsula on the? Is it called like the Mount Royal Island? Mar- or, yes, exactly. yeah, absolutely, yeah. And uh, it's Isle a, Royal, yeah, yeah. And it's a, a place you can only access by boat or airplane. You mm-hmm. think an airplane that can land on the water? You're right, right. But it's like a resort area that is completely, completely closed when even a hint of winter exists. Yeah, you can't get out of there. That's the problem. <laughs> and all yeah. I could think was like, oh. Why wouldn't you want to shack up for a nice winter's yeah. nap in Windigo, Michigan? Windigo, yeah, yeah, yeah. None of that sounds like you're going to make it out of there alive at any point. You know, my first thought when I saw the, on the map Windigo, Michigan, was, can I go there in the winter and like stay for a week? <laughs> like that was that's the person I am. No, I get it. I get it. It makes sense. <laughs> I mean, if you're like deep into that uh, and that excites you, which absolutely, if you're here. That kind of stuff is going to be going to intrigue you. Oh, I got to go check that out. But you know, I just I'm not the out, outdoor guy that I used to be back in the old scout days. I just I've almost had my fill of yeah. I, okay, I get it, Michigan. You know, <laughs> I see it so much of it. Well, you but, don't want hey, any more heaping helpings cool. of pure Michigan. Uh, I would. I like the. I like that. You know, that's a cool. Uh, it used to be Tim Allen doing those. I don't know if he still does, but anyway, that's off the oh, subject. Tim Allen. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Well, He's home improvement, here. funny, this is just a quick side note. Sure. Well, being from Ohio, Michigan was always right up there, and uh-huh. it was a very common place to go for camping, hunting, fishing, things like that. Yeah. And uh, that's why we loved home improvement in my household, because he was just in Michigan. So he'd mention like Saginaw, and he'd mention yeah, all these places. Right. And he'd, be like, yes. and he'd be like, oh yeah, your uncle goes to Saginaw to ice fish. And you'd be like, oh, <laughs> that's so cool. It's like the you'd watch it just right to hear by the, me. You hear the place names. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back to talk more about Michigan folklore. All right, we're back, and I am here still with Stu Miller. He has not escaped this episode of Spooky on the Road yet. yet. (laughs) But we've been talking about the Manitou. We've been talking about the Wendigo. The Wendigo is probably my favorite Native American folklore next to the Deer Woman. But I don't find the Deer Woman as scary as the Wendigo. The Wendigo scares the heck out of me. It's creepy, yeah. So that was the first joke I made the first time I stayed in super snowy northern Michigan. Is I was like, it's really nice here, and somebody was like, oh, it must be, it must be quiet there. And I'm like, oh yeah, if you sit totally still, you can hear the Wendigo scream. <laughs> like that's how quiet it is here. <laughs> Do they look around like, oh my god, this guy's heard it too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm always oh, like, I'm always, us. I'm like frying spam and eggs, and I'm like, I hope this doesn't smell too much like human flesh, or the Wendigo's gonna go check yeah. it out. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, I, I have one if you want to hear Please, my no, I'd uh, love one to hear I've heard. It. Yeah, I, I, I think I mentioned it to you. Uh, we have a thing called the Michigan melon heads, uh, as in watermelon heads. Uh, not that it's that's what it means, but that's their heads are huge. I guess is what I'm going with this. <laughs> and from what I understand, they are. And again, this is a, a scout story. They are uh, the children of escaped lunatics. Of course, why not? Well, sure. Uh, from any number of asylums around here. Uh, Kalamazoo has one very well known. Uh, and they have bred or inbred. And the offspring of said inbreeding are these giant headed, drooling, slovenly, cannibalistic humanoids. Um, and they wander the woods uh, here. And I don't know if they um, kill for like spite or anything like that. I think they just do it because you're in the woods. And, 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 you know, and they're there, uh, and that apparently they do eat, they do eat the people they, they kill. So, um, I have never seen one, obviously, uh, I don't know anybody who has, but apparently they are actually real people that live in the wilds, uh, of this state whereabouts. I have no idea. I, I would rather not know their address, frankly. <laughs> um, but that's another one of the, of the folklore slash potentially real things around here. I think, and I, I could swear, 
I've heard of <laughs> melon heads or something like that in Ohio too. Yeah, there, there might be, and yeah, that it could be true. I'm not sure if they spread their uh, existence to oh, other states. I've read about this because this is super weird. Three states have melon head legends, and they're Ohio, oh, cool. Michigan, and Connecticut. Oh, that's a stretch, huh? Yeah, that's so what I was thinking here. too. <laughs> like, I would have if it had said Ohio, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, I'd be like, like Wisconsin, of course. Or, or yeah, or Wisconsin, or, whatever, yeah. or or, or Ontario. Over a bunch and- <laughs> Maybe they vacationed on the East Coast. Yeah, apparently so. We're going so. to the ocean. Yeah. That's so, funny. I didn't know that. That's Yeah, I, I just, I remembered reading about this briefly because, um, you know, obviously for Weekly Spooky, I do a lot of research on different topics. Yeah. And since we, we recently launched the Terrifying and True program, which is on most Mondays, uh-huh. and and because of that, I don't have to necessarily do the heavy research. We We hire people to write the stories, but I do have to know what to tell them to write about. So I'll yeah. I'll sit and Google like creepy Ohio folklore or uh, unsolved mysteries of the Midwest, mm-hmm. and I have to get at least a cursory idea to tell them what to write about. Yeah. So I'm almost certain that one of my major lists might say melon heads in it because I, I remember be reading very, very basically about that. So were there ever any stories about areas being where the melon heads are or that you shouldn't go to this part of yeah. Michigan or anything like that? I th- I think so, um, and it's always like in uh, the most desolate, like the middle of the state, desolate locations, where you tend to just drive through on your way to somewhere else. Of course, you know, like you don't ever want to stop there, especially like oh, it's you know, nine o'clock at night. I got to pull over and pee. No, you don't. You just want to <laughs> keep going because <laughs> who knows what's waiting on the on the side of the road. And it always seems to be that too, like car found on shoulder of road, two shoes and passengers, nothing else. <laughs> and and who knows if that's, if that's what it is, but you know, it wouldn't surprise me if it's something <laughs> similar to that. You know, I mean, we have, we have plenty of ways to die in this state. Why not? Why not have it be the melon heads too? Yeah, why not? Uh, but no, I don't know exactly, uh, but it's our state's full of like pockets of nothing. So, you know, it's probably think- any, any number of those. Any state that has a lot of drive air through mm-hmm. areas feels that way to some extent. It does. Oh, it does. Yeah. Especially when Should... you have no reason to stop there and actually see yeah. what's there. You know, if, if you're, if you're only potentially hitting a gas station, I see Menard. you're really going to wonder. You'll really yeah, wonder exactly. like what, what just happened, you know, what's happening here uh, what is, you know, what is the story here? Why have I never heard of it? Which is also the other thing when you're traveling a yeah. lot, there's kind of this, like, I almost want to say narcissism where you're like, well, I've never heard this place is worth going right. to. It can't so, be that bad. So, so yeah. it, must, it must be something yeah. must be up. Cause like I'm here in Carp Lake, which is, I mean, I mean, you want to talk about out in the middle of nowhere, like the traffic lights aren't on. They, they oh. shut them off. Because wow. why bother? <laughs> like yeah. there's, there's like, wow. I was I was driving around at five thirty p.m. and I saw like oh. three three other cars tops. Like that is weird. I mean, <laughs> I'll drive through tiny towns around here, even around just within like, an hour of me, and if anything, they at least have one on the traffic. <laughs> you know, well, there might not be anything else, but well, they mean, got the flashing red going. Oh well, yeah, they, they're 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 functionally stop signs but the traffic lights are uh-huh. not on any kind of timer or any right. kind gotcha, of schedule gotcha. at all they're okay, just that makes sense. sitting there making yeah. sure you know that you probably need to stop but also who's gonna who's i'm also i've also i had to go to a walmart yesterday which is 30 minutes or 25 30 minutes away yeah. and i got on this open stretch of road and after about four minutes of not seeing anybody I oh I just started gunning it like I went like eighty six miles per hour down yeah, it. Yeah, you start ne- to worry, right? <laughs> Never saw another person yeah. or anything. I was and granted, I, I on the way back it snowed, so I didn't yeah. get to do that. But on right. the way out, I was just jamming. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, that's one of the things that around here that you do notice, even here. Uh, and like I said, an hour plus maybe around us, every little town. That even in, if they're desolate, which some are, or if they've got, you know, a, a do it a tool store open or something like that, it it's the weirdest feeling when you drive through the towns and you're like, people actually actually used to walk these streets and live here and be functioning members of society. Now it's like there's nothing. Yeah. And there are so many Michigan towns that look exactly the same. 
And you pass by tons of them, even going just this farm, you know, hour or so around us. But you want to do the same thing. You just kind of want to gun it through them because <laughs> what the heck is, why is this stuff no longer existing? Is that this is the question? I'm sure it's has something to do with, you know, everybody stopped making money and they left, but you never know. You well, know? and one of the reasons the towns all look the same is they were all built very quickly in the yes. same time period because right. of a boom in industry. Um, yes. I, I will say here in Carp Lake, I went to the local bar and grill mm -hmm. uh, to get some food the other day or the other evening, and it was packed with people having a great time playing pool mm, and, uh, and, and having a really fun time. And I honestly... I was thrilled. I was like, whoa, okay, this is dope. Like, I mean, Here's I knew, some humans. <laughs> and I knew it was going to be that way. Cause when I pulled yeah. in, I was like, the parking lot almost has no spots. Oh, I love that. Like, That's so cool that, that I, I have written stories like that where you're like the town around you is nothing, but you go to the, the local, uh, you know, joint like that. And it's just hop it. Yeah. Um, did you take time to look around at the locals and just kind of see what, each person kind of you kind of create your own story about what each person's doing there <laughs> um everybody there i felt was very transparently okay uh, drinking a whole lot of beer and eating a whole lot <laughs> yeah. of shockingly delicious chicken wings oh my goodness the food there was huh. very good and i love i love when a place adjusts your expectations in some way like you're, you're you think it's going to be one way but i went in there okay. and first of all it was like a movie like the record player stopped like when i walked in everybody stopped yeah. and looked at me yeah but instead of being crummy they were just, one guy in the back was just like dude i love it yeah because that's I, awesome i'm a very odd looking guy i dress strange oh, no, and everything no, you're like not. that Come well on, you know no. what i mean i'm an unusual looking person I, i'm serious i'm being totally facetious i know <laughs> i've seen you many times <laughs> You look like you're always wearing pajamas. I, so I am always that, wearing pajamas. <laughs> which I love. I got nothing, more, <laughs> nothing but respect for that, man. But so this was like a very like uh, half working class, half biker joint. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And and the, the but my favorite thing was we're, we're up in Carp Lake. We're kind of like, if you want to know where I am, it takes six to seven days for Amazon to send a package to you. Oh, my gosh. I checked because I wow. needed something. That's why I ended up going to a Walmart 25 minutes away is because I was yeah. like, okay, Amazon's not going to get here in the next couple of days. Right. So that's, that's where I'm at. And when I, when I went in there, <laughs> I, I love that I, I, my food was ready. So the lady just sets the food down and then slides my receipt to me and I look mm -hmm. at it and she just walks away. And I'm like, what am I? I have my card out. Like she could yeah. see it in my hand yeah. Yeah. and I look at the receipt. There's a QR code on it to pay via your phone uh, and you're in the middle of nowhere yeah, yeah. You, i guess that tells you something about how quickly technology is sort of I, absorbed i love that i love that yep. that even in a little out of the way bar the technology has made life so much easier for the bar yeah. patrons for the bar owner for the waiting staff it was it was awesome and then yeah, yeah i went to a general store the other day oh i love general stores oh, this place was really neat and uh, I bought some banana walnut bread that was homemade by the store nice. owner. Oh, that's oh. awesome! And uh, they Good had stuff. a you know they had a square reader. You know, it, yeah. it's just um, oh, and the internet in my cabin is really fast. By the way, it must be because you haven't broken up or anything <laughs> at all. And I I was kind of expecting that to happen. But, uh, I was going to say, um, going back to that whole walking into a, a local bar restaurant thing, I have always wanted to be in a situation like that where it turns into that scene from an American werewolf in London and they start <laughs> telling you about the local, like, well, in that case it was werewolves, but hey, it could be Wendigo or Manitou or whatever. I, I would love to sit there and listen to a bunch of just grisly old men and women saying, oh, don't tell them that story. It'll scare the crap out of them. Don't go out to the moors. I I, Dude, I want that to happen. If um, I I've worked, never had it, but I'd if love If I to. worked at a bar like that, yeah, I would do that to people for fun. Oh, it would be the best. So I worked, you're going to love this. I worked at a Spencer's Gifts oh. when I was in my early 20s. God bless you, sir. And it was actually a really fun job. It just doesn't pay great. But yeah, uh, but I was at a Spencer's Gifts working uh, part time. And this kid came in and was looking at the Ouija boards. And he walks up to me and he said, uh, or I walk up to him and he says, so does this really work? And he's like 14 or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I looked him dead in the eye and just started talking like, like the guy in Witchboard. I was like, <laughs> what you're holding is a portal to the spirit world, a world yeah, full oh of gosh. lost souls. That's awesome. Who suffered. Now, boy, 
you and a friend will sit down and put your fingers on that planchette. But don't you ever use that board alone, boy. You use that board alone, you'll become a portal to the undead. And they'll take you. They'll use you as a vessel to commit unspeakable acts. And the kid's eyes were like so wide. Tell me he bought it after that. No, hell no. He Oh. He, he Come put on. that sucker down, and uh, maybe that's why I don't work at Spencer's anymore. I was—I I mean, never made a well, good sale. Honestly, though, have you ever used one? Uh, have I ever used a Ouija board? No, because that yes. was a party game that required friends, so I never did it as a Aww, kid. You know, you made this sad. <laughs> no, I, I have, I have used well, I have used it uh, three times that I can remember, and and I kid you not, hand to God, every time something happened. Um, one of them, if you don't mind me elaborating, sure. Uh, one of them was in a, a creepy cabin because it's got to be oh, yeah. uh, down here on a lake that uh, the cabin actually and the land around it used to be owned by Al Capo. Not kidding either about that. Um, they we did it in this cabin that uh, was ramshackle at the time, but we we and three other me and three other people sat around the thing and and did the did the what you're supposed to do. And we we conjured, I guess is the word for it, a uh, little girl spirit that uh, appeared on the staircase in this creepy ramshackle house. And I'm telling you, I I was okay. I handled it okay. It was only a split second. But the dude <laughs> on my left that looked up and saw that, I've never seen a human being turn actually white. Did that and then ran out the door <laughs> towards the lake that the cabin was on. But we didn't have any stairs going up because they were broken and rotted. The dude jumped from the the uh, landing, ran into the lake. Uh, that was that was one. That was probably the best one. But the, the other two were just like things being knocked around, and I think a dresser fell over or something. Uh, but I've, I've honestly firsthand done it, and it's. I would never do it again. That's, I think that's where I'm leaving that. <laughs> yeah. fair, fair. No, that's, yeah. It, well, and, and that kind of party game when you're a kid is so fun anyway. I mean, like, mm -hmm. and so many party games were, were quote unquote supernaturally based, like stiff as a feather, yes. light as a board. Oh, and, yes. You know, yes. And, um, we did an entire episode of monthly spooky in October about all of the party games that were recommended when Halloween was brand new. Because Halloween okay. is not that old, the actual right. literal Halloween. It was it was invented basically in the 1900s. Right, right. So we read this like party book, and almost every game was do this, do this, do this, and then you'll know what kind of person you're going to marry or oh, who, your, yeah. who your future partner is. Or the games were literally just icebreakers to get men and women to talk to each other. Because yeah, makes you sense. know yeah. things were a bit more stiff back then. And a lot less was, stiff too, you know. Did that have like a Bloody Mary kind of thing too, where the p people in the party would go individually go to different mirrors and try to conjure the? It didn't the have Bloody a literal Mary Bloody Mary in it, but it had stuff like that. Yeah, stuff like that. Okay. And I've yeah, always, I mean, yeah. sorry, those are great. I I I remember do, you know going to parties when I when I was younger, those kind of things. And I say younger, but it was obviously that was like, you know, almost an adult. But I I find it. I find especially the Ouija board is just endless, endlessly fascinating. There are it's two sides of the of the coin. You either believe that you can get what you're supposed to get out of it, or you don't. There is no in between. You know, you either have used it and you know, or you you used it and oh, they're moving it. Everybody's moving it. Nothing happened. So there's there is no in between, and I love that about that. And to me, that was just a fun thing to try. And and I I will say again, I will never touch another one for as long as I live. <laughs> <laughs> I mean but, that's yeah. fair. So as we as we wrap up because I have a lot of Wendy going to do. <laughs> to sure. Do up here, nice. Um I want to ask you yeah in your in your opinion where is the creepiest part of Michigan? What is the scariest place in Michigan to go? Oh, that's actually to me that's a good answer because or a good question because I have a good answer for it. Um, and again, it's near me, uh, and it's, it's a cemetery. Uh, I, I went to high school in Pawpaw. I don't know if you know what Pawpaw is, but it's a very small, uh, it's bigger now than it used to be, but it's a small town, uh, west of us, west of me. And, uh, towards the end of my street, um, the main road that I grew up on, there's a cemetery on a hill and it stand, it's, it's still there and standing in front of it. 
and looking up as how they placed the the uh, gravestones going up this hill into this wooded area. It, it's just terrifying to look at. And I've been in it because we had to do a, uh, in high school, we had to do, uh, we had to pick a gravestone, basically, find the person and do as much information as we could. And back then, that was really hard. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> unless you went to the library or knew a, the registrar of the town, you weren't going to get much information out of it. But just wandering through that cemetery, you know, after dark and, and uh, staying there long enough to find something interesting and, you know, scaring each other and stuff. I think to me, that was probably the scariest. I mean, there's a lot of places I've been in Kalamazoo here where they are haunted and I've felt um, that kind of uh, presence. And it's it's scary, but it's not like I need to get out of here kind of scary. That place, that cemetery um, on the hill. I forgot the exact name of it, sorry, but... <laughs> It's there. <laughs> that place was always like, you shouldn't be anywhere near here, let alone in it, you know? Uh, so to me, I think that's that's probably the closest one. All right. Well, I am happy that I can't find it. So <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to find it. It's, it's fine. You're good. So, thank you, Stu, so much for sure. sitting down and chatting about this. Is there anything you'd like to tell people about? Uh, I know you have a lot of creative endeavors going on. Yeah, Why don't you give them a little yeah. plug? Uh, well, I have two books. Uh, one is called The Monster Book of Creatures. It's a children's book, uh, illustrations and poems. Uh, that came out last year. And then I have a new book published as of October uh, called uh, Unfinished Tales of the Amulet. Uh, it is like flash fiction uh, stories. Uh, they can both be found on Amazon. Um, and I that's about it right now. But yeah. Well, thank you again, Stu, sure. so much for uh, hanging out with us. And uh, no problem. This has been the inaugural Spooky on the Road in Michigan. <laughs>